Public Q and A presence ask Reddit question. What annoys you the most about the pandemic? The commercials. Good lord if I see one more commercial with we care about you, straight face. In these trying times. We're in this together. Now buy our stuff. You whore. What commercial is this? And how do they know so much about me? I feel like I have never heard the word unprecedented before covid. You might say that how often you hear it now is. I'll see myself out. I am surprised a company hasn't attempted purposeful a negative PR yet. If a company straight up said in a commercial we don't actually care about you, but we need your money to provide our service and pay ourselves I would totally use them. Just a commercial with a robot voice saying consume over and over. I'd buy that. You are insufficient. Purchasing our product will briefly make you feel sufficient. Here is a sexy person with our product. Perhaps they are sexy because they possess our product. Perhaps buying our product will make you sexy too, and will make this sexy person want to have sex with you, which will stop you from feeling so insufficient. And an image of Hypnotoad. I am so sorry I hate commercials too, but I made a product that is actually pretty good, and this marketing bullshit is the easiest way to let a bunch of people know quickly. Sorry again. Stay safe, yeah of course, what else do you expect me to do? The new normal constantly being mentioned on commercials. Was watching old DVR stuff with my parents. The commercials not about COVID were so refreshing. Every single fucking website has a bar across the front page telling me how they are dealing with the pandemic. Even the online site I have used for years to order audiobooks. It's online. I don't fucking care. OMG, we were getting emails from suppliers detailing how their head office was dealing with shit. I don't care man, I work in retail, no one is inviting me to the Japanese head office anytime soon. And you get to see all the mailing lists you are on. Rent a car 10 years ago. That company now needs to tell you all about their coronavirus response. Moving to a new area right before and being unable to make friends. This I've felt so alone. I had plans got go to different art classes and things but everything got shut down. I have zero friends slightly frowning face. You should try online gaming. Fun and you can make new friends. Yeah but then you have to meet online gamers. Slash S. You've met me, now. But don't worry, I wouldn't like to talk to me either. How does one find an online game community? There's a subreddit for nearly every game out there. Play a game and add people you had a fun game with. Same. Moved from a quiet suburb to an apartment in the middle of a downtown arts district, really excited to walk around, find a favorite dive bar, explore all the little hole in the wall shops and experimental theater productions. Moved in on March 15th, things still haven't really started to open up yet to the point where I can become a regular anywhere. I was almost in the exact same boat as you. I was going to move that same day, but got furloughed literally the next day. Thankfully I was able to get out of the lease because A, I would have been broke as fuck and B, I would have been trapped inside an apartment indefinitely, and staying in my current living situation sounded much better. I totally get that, except mine was with moving back home. Prior to being gone at college for two years, I didn't have really any friends back home. So when I came back in the spring, I was kinda stuck with not knowing how to make friends again when I wasn't on a college campus and won't be for two years because of online college. But luckily last month I made some really great friends through a volunteering thing, so I'm really glad about that. I really hope you've been able to make some friends, or will soon. Right, can't meet people at college cause all my classes are online and can't meet people at work. It is almost impossible to make friends right now. Can't get any decent 99% isopropyl to clean my glassware. So far this is one of the only comments that is an annoyance, and not a rather serious grievance. Best answer here. Yo just buy 99. 5% alcohol on Amazon. 
just a bit with some salt does wonders. Last time I looked it cost $40. Underrated comment of the year here lol. I have personally used lower purity ISO and salt and it doesn't do shit. Maybe you got stronger stuff, but where I am from it goes from 90 something to 70, and no matter how much salt you add 70 just doesn't cut it. Everclear works great. I am just tired of talking about it, and it's somehow creeping into every single conversation. I work in a large hospital in a large city, and I have to deal with it at work every day. I don't want to have to constantly discuss it when I am not on the clock, too. The other day I tried to google something biology related, I think it was a question about antibodies or something, and literally every result was about coronavirus. I know I know poor me I had to use Google's advanced search first world problems etc, but it's like just because coronavirus is a pandemic right now does not mean every microbiological question that someone googles is about it. I noticed that as well. I was trying to self-diagnose something unrelated to COVID-19, but the search results were flooded with articles about the virus. Word of a hopefully, helpful advice to you and you slash letable when searching on Google, you can use word to omit results with your chosen word. Obviously you would get rid of the brackets and the quotation marks, but just a tip for next time. You can also tell Google to show results from a year ago. I do this instead of minus corona. Been saying this since like fucking March, tired of talking and hearing about it. Everyone's a pandemic expert all of a sudden sudden too. This is exactly it. It's like when I try to have work meetings and just kind of catching up, and it all comes back to covet. I am sick of it. Whoa whoa stay away from me. This is admittedly somewhat selfish, but I miss being able to go to the store at 3 a.m when nobody else is around, basically. I was a midnight shopper too. Thankfully, my grocery store lets me order my groceries ahead of time now, and loads them into my car for me when I pick them up. I don't even have to get out of the car. It's very nice. I really, really don't understand this one. Why are shops no longer 24 hours? I used to go at like 10 p.m. when there were two other customers but now I am forced to go, and therefore queue, when there are hundreds during the day. If it's about shelf stocking then they are doing that during the day. I've been sensible during the pandemic, but this one I really have an issue with. It was advertised at first as time to disinfect with no customers, but now, I wouldn't be surprised if it was just to reduce employee hours to give them a break. And by give them a break you mean reduce their hours to save the corporation money. I'm waiting to find out if I have cancer, and I can't take someone in with me for support. Wishing you the best. I am so sorry, that sucks. Manage a convenience store. Seems like a third of things I try to order are on back order. Same and same and nobody believes it. So they start bitching up a storm while their saliva spatters on the improvised plexiglass shield that is all the owner will pay for, because they have asthma, and can't wear a mask while I stand there in a mask for the sixth hour straight while my chronic bronchitis is giving me hell. The past couple of weeks, I've just kept the second register open, one person per shift, but we have two registers, and I let them rant but keep serving other customers. Some of them get absolutely livid that they can't hold everyone up while they have their say and storm out swearing they won't be back. By my count, I've only actually lost two regular customers so far doing this, so I guess they found somewhere else to buy their 99 cent three pack of blunts. Boo hoo. Same. I thought stock clerk was a better position for me as it doesn't usually require me to deal with customers. Now they're just bitching in my face because they see a scanner in my hand and assume I own the store and the warehouse we get our merch from. We're the cheap grocery store so they can threaten to leave but they can't afford anywhere else. I respect that the supply chain is fucked but brew I am so sick of this shit. As someone who works in live music and whose partner is a musician, the lack of shows. I hear you. I miss live music. 
I had a ticket to see Rage Against the Machine, and another for Die Untoward. This year is bullshit. I had tickets to see Tool. I feel your pain. This. As a freelance musician, for about two months, I felt absolutely worthless. I worked my ass off practicing my instrument, violin which is super difficult, spent thousands of dollars on equipment, education, and lessons with top teachers, and with gigs and concerts getting cancelled, I felt like all of my life's work had gone down the drain. It was one of the darkest periods of my life because it felt like the thing that made me feel alive was gone, and I didn't know when it'd be back, or if it'll ever come back, I'm currently a lot better. I started meditating and going to the gym, and wearing a mask even if I'm the only one, again, and it's helped tremendously. I also have wonderful supporters on Patreon, who have been motivating me to upload more on YouTube. It might just be me, but the lack of respect people display now. I work in a warehouse that isn't open to the public. Never has or will be. We're not a storefront, we have no signs beyond basic markers for delivery drivers. Orders have always been done either via email or a phone call. And yet people will just walk in and order stuff now and expect it to be done then and there. That's just wrong. The level of entitlement, especially within any kind of service industry, has shot up dramatically. I think everyone is just on edge already and they just want absolutely everything to go their way for once, so when it doesn't they become rude. As a service industry worker, I am ready to pull down my mask in public and legitimately scream at the next rude person who crosses my path. As a soft-spoken person, it's very annoying that it is even harder to hear me with my mask on. I will continue to wear one as long as necessary, but I look forward to the day when people can read my lips and facial case to help cover the gap for my soft voice lol. I have trouble hearing people in general. Masks have made it so much harder and I feel like a total idiot when I have to ask people to repeat themselves. This. My ADHD causes me to struggle with correctly recognizing what people say. Not being able to read lips as I listen is definitely making it harder. Same here. I never realized how much I relied on lip reading until now. Same. I didn't realize I was doing it until I couldn't anymore. It has been super strange. I didn't think my hearing was bad but now I wonder. I used to think my hearing was bad but it turned out that auditory processing issues are common with ad slash ADHD. I am not a doctor though. LOL same PPL, are I like I can't hear you sweetie even though it feels like I am screaming. I don't generally have trouble speaking up and being heard as an adult but I was painfully shy as a child. I remember reading Mr. Quiet and crying at the part where he tries to buy corn flakes at the grocery store. It's brought out the absolute worst in most people. Some people have risen above, but most have not, and people you'd have never thought in a million years could be so crass, rude, nasty, and downright mean are all coming out of the woodwork. I have definitely noticed a significant change in people's attitude, and I don't like it at all. I work in retail, and there has been a huge change in some of the regulars' behavior. With it being a small shop it's really easy to remember faces of the people who come in. I notice that as well. I work in a retail store as well and people have definitely been meaner and different since the pandemic started. I'm good at holding my cool but I still notice it nonetheless. Same here. A lot of the customers have been coming in specifically to challenge us. Walking in without a mask and cursing us out when we tell them to put one on, then act shocked when we refuse service. I think some people are just naturally belligerent, and with a little stress that innate aggression is just coming front and center. They want a fight for the sake of having a fight, as if getting some underpaid retail worker to back down will get their lives back to normal, or as if they can just shout slash fight their way out of this situation when they really can't. I had someone ignore me like a bad toddler during my last work shift. I was the manager on duty and told them to put on a mask, or I can help them outside if they have medical issues. They just continued about their day, pretending like I never said anything. 
I very forcefully told them that they're not above the law, and that I am reserving my right to refuse service. They continued to just shop around like I never said anything. I've never felt more like I was yelling at a brick wall. That's just the worst. Having to wear a mask has become a global thing. Why do people think they should challenge a lowly retail worker blows my mind. Hope you're sticking in there though. Be strong and compassionate. It was much worse at the start of the pandemic. I hope everything has gotten better since then for you. The start of the pandemic was very rough at my job. I was having panic attacks almost nightly thinking about having to go back into work and deal with customers again. I'd never had so many people snap at me and yell at me over things that were either super trivial or outside of my control before. They've mostly chilled out in the past couple months, though I feel. I know exactly what you mean. I still remember being personally attacked because the customer was upset at the price of a product. It just didn't make much sense to me at the time. Like. Why are you mad at me because a product costs what it costs? Eh you never know what someone is going through. I have thick skin. I am sorry you've had to deal with that. It's not your fault there's a pandemic, it's not your fault that masks are required, it's a frustrating time for everyone for one reason or another. Those frustrations should not be taken out on innocent workers in any industry. Extra hugs for you, a super sweet please, and thank you to save for the when a customer forgets, and stay safe safe out there. Thank you. Heavy black heart it isn't as bad as it used to be. But at the start of lockdown it was very noticeable when we was struggling to get products in stock. I still don't view them as bad people as it isn't an everyday scenario and 2020 is a rough year for us all. But there was something heartbreaking to see how quickly people can snap just because a certain product was out of stock or having to queue differently for social distancing. 2020 in general, really. Take a contentious election, a global pandemic, and a bunch of glue-eating morons with social media, and you get probably the worst behavior I've ever seen in my life. We'll be writing history books about the year without common decency. Also this whole situation has exposed just how god-awful our global leadership is, and how far companies will go to keep making a profit. Many companies using all this as an excuse to be awful to their employees, customers, or both. I just hope that 2021 is better. Knock on wood. Let's be real, this year is a culmination of a decade or more of polarization and a rise in hate. This shit didn't come out of nowhere. It's been festering for years and we're only now realizing we probably should have treated the wound when it was fresh. Early on when the states started to close, an elderly couple raided my grocery cart while I was pushing it at the grocery store to take things that there was no shortage of. I was stunned. I also found out that one of the people whose businesses I supported for 15 years was a complete piece of shit, who wound up encouraging people to violate lockdowns, refused to close his store, encouraging people to come to the store without masks etc. I even spoke to him and gave him an outline for how he could set up a very easily maintained pickup at curb system, and he laughed at it. I also found out that one of my neighbors is a profiteer in situations like this. He shortly built up about seven years worth of canned goods in his garage and enough toilet paper to last a family of for well over a year very quickly, which he started selling at high markups. People don't like him anymore. Where the fuck do you live? Orange County, California. Right near a bunch of retirement communities. Ah, OC, little concerning how they're dealing with schools right now, considering the rest of the state. Glad my county is okay with schools. How everyone keeps saying everyone is out of work self-isolating working from home, or getting hazard pay etc. I've been working every weekday. Going business to business. Delivering product. Getting signatures. Having to deal with all kinds of random people. Employees, customers of my customer and no one gave a shit about the delivery person. Want to say I appreciate you. You may not be my postal worker, but as someone who has been forced to stay home, immunocompromised great-grandparent, and lost my job because of the pandemic, 
and scrambled to order the things I needed to get set up to work from home, people like you have made a huge impact and, at least for me, allowed me to afford to keep food on the table and keep my great-grandma safe. So thank you for doing what you do. Rushed Research I've read so many preprint papers that are just trash or missing painfully obvious variables. Not surprising many of these papers get retracted or absolutely tore apart by academics. It honestly feels like sometimes the authors are just trying to get something to stick so they can have name recognition. Thankfully, there's a ton of great research out there. And then the media reports on non-peer-reviewed studies and presents them as fact. As a service provider, I can see that some of my clients are actually benefiting from this pandemic. But still, they act like Oderfi Berry. In these times, we are all struggling. Can we please lower the budget? Can we delay the payments? I can literally hear the smiles on calls from them as most of them have these ready-made excuses ready while I know for a fact that their business is fucking booming for them because of this pandemic. But they expect my small business to take the hit and work in back capital for them when it clearly is not and they are literally showing off on their linkedin and websites and social medias how well they are doing me and my partners are working without salary just so that we don't have to lay off our own employees and i've got some of these almost millionaire assholes acting like life and business is tough and two out three of these clients are the ones that are not taking this pandemic seriously and asking their employees to come to their respective offices when they can easily manage it by working from home. The last sentence is my mom's job 1000%. It took a guy dying from the virus for them to finally move them to a work from home environment, they had like 70 something cases prior to her co-worker passing. After two weeks they started to move everyone back in the office. Sad thing is, my mom said everything has been running a heck of a lot smoother at home. This company is walking on very thin eggshells at the moment, damn near out of business, so they are making the dumbest decisions possible to try to keep money flowing. I just pray every day that my mom doesn't get it, and if she does it is asymptomatic or mild. Yikes. I'd definitely drop them as soon as you can afford to. Preferably with as little notice as possible, though stay legal about it. And hire away their best employees if you can afford to. Whoa, rich people profiting off of a disaster, and then using that disaster to justify cutting costs to maximize profit. That's totally unheard of. The blatant politicization of science, the amount of small businesses that will be shuttered forever because of it, the idiocy it's brought out in people. Science has been politicized for years. The Isolation I didn't know for the past two weeks that one of my best friend's dad died. Without the pandemic I would have known, and would have been there for him. Not just that, but the isolation drove my uncle's depression into overdrive resulting in his suicide. He leaves behind five grandchildren, another on the way, two wonderful kids and their spouses, his disabled wife, his retirement house by the beach, his remaining siblings and in-laws, and various nieces and nephews. Now his wife, who is physically limited due to MS and almost incapable of speaking, has to sell their dream home and live her sunset years without her person to guide her. I've been crying fairly regularly since it happened. He'll never get to meet my newborn daughter. Last night I read her a book before bed, and when we finished I saw a handwritten note he wrote on it. It's all that I have left of him now. A, I am so sorry for your loss. I see people in public restrooms at work all the time, who run their gloved hands under water for like one second, and then go about the rest of their day touching everything. Just skip the gloves and wash your fucking hands. Clean hands are better than dirty gloves. I've seen some people use hand sanitizer on their gloves. I suppose it's better than nothing but seriously just forego the gloves entirely, you're wasting time and material. Misinformation I don't mean a huge conspiracy theory, or any political party using COVID-19 to their advantage, thought there is some of that. I mean businesses, media, schools, local governments, etc. 
lying to the public and slash or suppressing information. Some of them probably have an agenda, e.g. schools, but I suspect much of this boils down to apathy or ignorance. When people say the pandemic chaos brought out the worst, they are usually referring to people and their actions. However, it has brought out a much worse worst in our institutions. My cynicism used to be strong, but now it's over 9,000. I honestly don't mind the social distancing, the masks, although uncomfortable, they are better than the alternative, the corona test, although it was very uncomfortable to get a long stick up your nose, it's still better than the alternative, the quarantine, lack of travel, lack of work and money for months, the plastic screens in shops, the hand sanitizers etc. It's all good. But the mental exhaustion from all of this overcautiousness and being afraid of hurting other people for no apparent reason is slash was almost unbearable at times, especially when you couldn't even get tested at first. I was afraid I had it already in March, had almost all the symptoms and felt like total shit for three weeks. I couldn't get tested as there was not enough tests available for everybody, and I hadn't traveled to the high-risk countries, China, us and Italy at that point. I had my wedding coming up, so I didn't want to risk anything so I couldn't touch any of my relatives or friends, had to self-isolate until the wedding, and couldn't get tested until August after the wedding when the symptoms reappeared. I would have most likely lost it if I would have been single, and not be able to see or touch anyone for five months. It fucking sucked. That essential workers didn't get an extra $600 as well, an extra stimulus or government enforced extra pay. I feel bad for all those who lost their jobs and should be grateful for job security, but I did the math and would have been making double on unemployment than I was working. I just think we deserved something too. People are treating essential workers like shit, too. Everyone's talking about how important we are to keeping the world running in these trying times, but damn they sure don't appreciate it all that much. Grocery workers getting screamed at over product shortages, doctors being called liars, nurses getting spit on. Maybe it's cause we're the only people with job security now, or maybe people are just assholes and the pandemic made them show it. It's probably the latter. I'm an EMT, so spent all those peak any months literally transporting COVID positive patients every day. My coworkers who went on unemployment made more than I did covering their shifts while still working my own. It's absolutely infuriating to think about. Volley firefighter and EMT here, it's blowing my mind that first responders aren't getting hazard pay. It's blowing my mind that they get paid so little. I am still working. My employer made everyone take a 10% pay cut. Their reasoning was to avoid firing anyone. I work for a printing company. We only have about 12 employees on the press room floor, and our interactions tend to be limited and short. I'm glad to still be employed, but I was a little jealous of family members who have been working from home. Yeah, some companies gave them extra hourly pay for a while, then went into its all good again mode, like in July. An extra $600 was more than enough for those collecting unemployment, I mean more than they were making in the first place in many cases. Definitely, I feel for people who work in grocery stores these days. Sure glad I am not in their shoes. A working class hero is something to be. My nursing home was giving us $1 extra while we had multiple COVID patients LMAO. Bank teller here. Lines wrapped around the bank every day for months. Customers with such entitlement and attitude issues most colleagues and I cried once a day most days. Oh, but it's okay. Here's your $500 bonus from corporate who's been working from home since March. We were told about some bonus but never got it. No extra pay. Just 5-0 HRS a week since February. Yup. Paid less while being in packed grocery stores and getting shit from entitled customers because certain products are out of stock. How is the store out of Gatorade? People bought it all. I feel this also. I work for Coca-Cola and every single day, I'm getting yelled at because we're out of a flavor. Or because the store has rules now. My girlfriend that does cosmetology was out of work obviously for a while, 
and she got the extra 600 which helped out a ton as I got an extra dollar an hour, and that was it. This lasted maybe two months. And now since we're so slow on product etc, our hours have been cut. Most of the time, I just work as slow as possible and still only get 32 hours or so a week. Trust me it ain't all that good. I lost my apartment waiting for my unemployment checks and had my car repo d. Mine took over 12 weeks to disperse. It was too late, my back pay literally went to my moving expenses, moving out, and now having to move in elsewhere, and I have to pay taxes to the government on the unemployment check I'm getting from the government out of taxes I paid towards it. I wish I was able to keep my job, I would have been better off. Light skin tone shrug but the dollar six hundred slash week ended. And it ain't coming back. Meanwhile my job ain't back, so it what to do. I already filed for bankruptcy. Light skin tone shrug. It's really shown me how stupid most people are. They're even dumber than that. The gyms are closed. It's one of the few places I actually go. Comma. I am losing good weight and gaining bad weight. Gyms are open near me but I don't want to deal with BS. Same for me, I came to terms a while ago that I can have all the exercise equipment at home that I'd need, but just won't because I will find something else I would rather do and do that. I finally found a gym I like in the area I currently live, it is affordable, kind of nice, and right next to my office, and I was going four times a week, MT slash TF, either before work, during lunch or after work. Then all of a sudden nope not anymore. I am still a healthy weight for someone my size, but I have put on a bit of weight. Legit question, how do you find time to work out during lunch? Do you eat while working before your official lunch hour? Truthfully it is a combination of the gym is literally next door so I could walk over get dressed, do a strong 4-0 ish minutes of exercise, take a shower and be back in the office in under an hour and the ability to have a sandwich at my desk in my office we tend to be a bit relaxed on that so people often have snacks and such within arm's reach. I envy your work day. Everything that I was looking forward to was cancelled. This summer was the one between high school and college for me. Even though these are selfish and not very important problems, I would have loved to have a normal graduation and a summer spent by the lake with all my friends. And now it's almost over and I feel like I'll be forever missing out on those experiences. It might seem like a small sacrifice that pales in comparison to some others, but that's a rite of passage. A special moment in your life that you can't just do later. I am sorry you didn't get to have that experience. You have every right to grieve what you've missed out on. That it hit my country right after I started to want to live again. I don't remember a time in my life where I cared about anything and I was going to just kill myself. A few months before lockdown, I went off of medications that were not helping. After the withdrawal I began to want to live. And the world shut down. I was unhappy about that. ETA, I still want to live but now everything sucks. Glad you want to live. Hope it tastes even sweeter when the wait is finally over. Massive corporations seizing the opportunity to further hoard wealth, crush small business, and extract bailouts from the government. The company I work for started giving us gift cards to shop at our stores, grocery store so it's very convenient, alongside a small temporary pay raise. But the gift cards tended to be more valuable, $100 gift cards compared to a $1 raise. Turns out the gift cards were given to us because our company was given a lot of money by the state government to help out the workers. So they basically took taxpayer money and put it in their wallets by using that money to give staff plastic money that can only be used at our branches. It's helpful for me when I need groceries, but still corrupt as shit. That I can't see movies in theaters anymore. I really wanted to see The Quiet Place too, but of course they pushed it back. I was like, fine, I'll wait till they stream it online. But nope. 
It looks like they're going to wait for the theaters to reopen. Like, are you kidding me? Dollar 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 movies cost money. They need theaters to make that money back streaming services don't nearly pay enough to justify big budget movies, and if they sell it online separately, it will get pirated and leaked online in a day. There's a theater by my work that basically gives you the luxury treatment, think living room comfort but theater sized screen. You can order entrees there and all the seats are recliners, and I mean real recliners, you lean all the way back. I was really looking forward to watching the green night there, but with COVID I don't even know if they're gonna be able to open again. Idiots acting like wearing a mask is literally the most painful thing to ever happen to them. Or tying it to politics. I hate that actually caring about the greater good of the general public is essentially considered a political stance in America. Greater good. Greater good equals socialism. General public equals collectivism. My personal good equals freedom. Get it now, commie. Slash S. Hilarious observation someone else made there seems to be a pretty big overlap in the groups of people that bitch that wearing a, literally, paper-thin face mask is torture, but waterboarding at Guantanamo Bay isn't. The blatant politicization. That I've been inside and isolating and put all my plans on hold since March, and thanks to so many people being selfish asses, there's still no end in sight. Yeah every time, I see slash hear another party at my neighbors with a bunch of cars parked outside I want do my head in. We're never getting out, are we? On the other hand, I'm amazed how they're not already all sick yet, while good people who were doing their best to protect themselves either have a limited life now or that and they got infected, at a mandatory outing or necessary hospital visit etc. It's never the people doing the selfish stuff that get hurt, is it? People will cough on you as a joke. That's a good way to get punched in the neck. How quickly the stay at home was dropped by people and even governments, it's like everyone stopped caring. That happened around the same time flatten the curve became stay at home till this is over. It's not just governments. Some hospitals quickly went from lockdown mode to business as usual folks mode. Same with universities and schools. I agree, once people got tired of it and summer came around, everyone stopped caring. Dating is really fucking hard. I wondered how this is going for people. How have you been going about it? We haven't really. Yeah I gave up dating apps a few months ago because I knew I wouldn't be able to meet up with people, and there's no point in being on there otherwise. If I did meet someone on a dating app now, they'd lose interest by the time we were able to meet in person. It's like giving yourself blue balls. I've had a couple people message me looking for hookups. Like Nabro. If I'm not hugging my friends, I'm not sleeping with a random. Also I've found a lot of people one, just want I chat to pass the time and two, are all over the word. I guess if you pay for Tinder you can set your location to wherever. It shows up as one kilometer from me, and one was in San Fran, and another in Cairo. So yeah, dating is hard. The deaths of 19 of my close friends, and how many people have callously said well, they had an underlying condition so they were going to die anyway. Or the say they died from their underlying condition and the doctors just said COVID so that they could get money. Autoimmune diseases don't develop from someone's poor choices. I've been in the autoimmune community for just under 25 years, and never have so many of my friends died in so short amount of time. It wasn't their fault, and they had worth and value. Edit, I feel like I should first say I wasn't trying to make anyone else's annoyances sound petty by comparison. I wrote my original response last night, and my annoyance answer was meant to be about how many people dismiss the death tolls based on underlying conditions, or by thinking doctors are getting paid to inflate numbers. It annoys me and leads to me becoming infuriated. I should probably also state that I am currently going through some fairly intense medical issues that keeps me in a very vulnerable state. And while my typical practice would be to call up particular friends within my autoimmune community, 
that I no understand the situation I kept finding myself reach for my phone only to remember that the ones I wanted to call had all died. It was rough. So high pain days accompanied by high grief. Also thank you to the many people who have said such lovely things and sent condolences. I'm heartened to see that not everyone out there is a jerk. It's good to know that there are still people out there that believe others have inherent worth despite whether their bodies function perfectly or not. Thank you. So sorry for your loss and the callous attitudes you have had to face during this time. Thank you for your condolences and empathy. This feels like some strange inescapable day Marais. I wish people could see that a pandemic isn't political. And empathy shouldn't be political either but here we are. I'll keep being the best version of myself I can be while holding the truth and wisdom of my friends in my heart and in my actions. When people wear their masks without covering their noses. LMAO. Seriously though what's the point of a mask if you won't even cover your nose? It's not a hard concept PPL. I don't get it. Like it's a mask. It covers your breathing parts. Why is it so hard for people to wear it correctly? This? Almost everyone who comes into the store I work at wears their mask like this. Yesterday, I had a woman wearing a crocheted mask, with blatant holes in it. That one was a major what the hell moment. Of or there was someone who pulled down their mask in front of my coworker to sneeze, because sneezing in your mask is gross so many idiots. I agree sneezing in your mask is gross but, that's the point of it. To prevent you sneezing all over the place. Cashier here, I'm completely disgusted by the comically disappointing, disproportionately different responses from various ages evoked by the pandemic, and the extent to which such has demonstrated how much the next generation has their shit together, particularly by direct comparison against their own parents, unfortunately. Specifically since March, I've had kids come through my line wearing masks with their parents who weren't, heard parents rave incoherently about the pandemic itself, the election, and whatever other topic, all while their kids stood there with their mouth shut, appropriately rolling their eyes whenever I was the only adult looking at them directly, and watched perfectly well-behaved children, who were themselves as polite with me as I could ever ask any customers to be, get berated by either parent or both, for absolutely no reason whatsoever, at least which was obvious. In light of events having taken place within four to five months time prior to writing, I am quite afraid that I find the current state of affairs far more concerning than I find the direction our world now appears to be heading, to put it bluntly. Amongst my neighbors and co-workers, it has been nothing short of bizarre to notice the generational difference. I swear that 90% of the people that I know who are under age 30 are taking this super seriously and 90% of the people over age 50 are like, straight up mad at anyone who is taking this seriously. I literally don't get it. My 16 year old and her friends take all of this very seriously. I'm proud of them. My 16 year old and her friends take all of this very seriously. Seen it. I'm proud of them. So am I. It's usually adults I find disappointing. I do cashier in a drive through and my experience has been really similar. A lot of the younger people I get seem to take it more seriously, but I get a lot of older people who are still doing stuff like licking their hands as they count their cash or hold their credit card in their mouth when they have something in their hands. Obviously this is generalization and I get the opposite from time to time, but that's been the trend I've seen. We've also been unable to get every ingredient for our menu, so some of our meals are temporarily unavailable. Even though we're in the middle of a pandemic and it's kind of out of our control, people still like to yell at us for not having the food they want. People who would otherwise be very shaken up by people dying in any other circumstance, a terrorist attack, for example, treating this pandemic as if it's a hoax. The people who think that the government telling us what to do regarding health and safety is something new. Wow. You are still with us. Thanks for being such a nice person. As long as you are here, why not like this video and subscribe to our channel. Also you can press the bell icon, so you won't miss any future uploads.